Welcome back to another Crypto Gorilla video. Today I want to talk about GambleFi because I believe this is going to be one of the biggest sectors in all of Web3, meaning there's plenty of opportunities to catch early tokens as well as hold some into the next bull run. So in this video, I want to go over some of the utility of GambleFi tokens, discuss the different platforms that are already out there, and of course talk about future opportunities that are still available for us to get. Now, as usual, I'm not a financial advisor. This is just my opinion, which can be totally wrong. So always do your own research and please don't lose your life savings or your house gambling it away. So let's first talk about why these tokens exist in the first place and why every online casino should be implementing them. The short answer, they don't have to. Online casinos have been running perfectly fine for decades and will continue to do so. However, by implementing the right level of utility through a coin or an NFT, companies are able to unlock a new breed of customer. Now the level of utility varies. It could be anything from discounts on platform fees to voting rights on key decisions based on how many tokens somebody holds. However, the creme de la creme of utility, the one everyone in Web3 and frankly just everybody wants is number go up. We want to make money. And what better way to do that than by sharing a piece of the pie with your profits. Now the benefit for the company is by sharing these profits with your holders, you're not only incentivizing them to hold onto your token long term to keep getting these payouts similar to a dividend, but companies are able to create an army of users who will not only be loyal to their platform, they'll essentially become their spokesperson preaching the gospel of that company in order to increase the value of the token to increase their own bags. We see this all the time on Twitter with coins and NFTs, people shilling their bags, essentially joining a cult and it's all they can talk about. So if companies are able to capture this cult-like following, it could be really beneficial for their growth. So there's many different platforms that are available for gambling that are already out there. So let's take a look at how some of these defer that have already launched their token. Now, one you've probably already heard of is Rollbit. They have the biggest market cap of all of the gambling tokens. It currently sits at roughly 460 million and their platform is great. They offer a ton of different games. They have NFT raffles, they have slot machines, they have crypto future trading with up to 1000 X leverage. Their UI is clean and they don't have any KYC requirements, which their customers love. Now, unfortunately their token does not have any revenue sharing. However, what they do instead, which is kind of a good way to get around all these securities laws is that they use a portion of their revenues to buy back their token and burn it. Now, some of you might feel that a company buying back their token is unethical, similar to all the complaints we see when a project sweeps the floor of their own NFT. However, this is a strategy that major companies like Apple have been implementing for years when they do a share buyback. Now, the difference between buying back your own shares and buying your token is that Rollbit is burning these tokens, so it makes the entire supply deflationary. And if we look on their website, they've already burned burnt over 36% of the total supply. So I personally really like Rollbit. I use them myself and I do feel that the success of their token is really helping push the whole GambleFi narrative forward. So I see this as being one of the safer, safer with air quotes, because nothing is safe, but I see it as being one of the safer bets for the upcoming bull run. Now on the opposite side of Rollbit, you have something like BetSwirl. The key difference here is that Rollbit uses a provider to give them a ton of their games, as do plenty of these casino platforms. Whereas BetSwirl, all their games are in-house. So they'll have a lot less variety and games to choose from, but they've made Made all of their own games. Now their token goes by the ticker symbol bets and it has a much smaller market cap. It is roughly at $3 million at the time of filming this video, which when compared to Rollbit, Rollbit is a nine figure market cap. So it's a behemoth compared to Betswirl. Now they do offer staking for their token where users get a yield based on the chain that they choose. And similar to Rollbit, they're also doing the token buyback and burn method. They've currently burned almost 12% of the entire supply. Next, we have a platform like LooksRare, which started off as a marketplace, but they have slowly been pivoting towards GambleFi. Now they currently only have two games. One of them is a raffle system where you just buy raffle tickets and you hopefully win an NFT. And the other one is called YOLO, where you YOLO your ETH into a pool of ETH. It is visually represented by a wheel. Anybody could watch it. It is quite entertaining and it has had a positive effect on their token. When they launched YOLO, the token went up 50%. It has come down since then, but it does illustrate how much people like GambleFi. And if they keep adding more and more games, I do feel like this could have a bigger effect on their token. 
The fourth kind of platform that's available for gambling is something like dubs, which not only allows you to bet on other people, you can even compete yourself in video games. So essentially, this is esports betting. Now, dubs isn't the only platform to have done esports betting. There's been plenty in the past. In 2021, a platform called Exceed launched who have their own token as well. The key difference here is that dubs has revenue sharing with their holders where you can earn 1% of the total revenue. Now, if you're used to crypto, you know that 1% is basically zero. We want a much higher percent of whatever it is. And luckily, we do have a couple of alternatives if revenue share is what you're interested in. So the two that sparked my interest were Bazed and Sweet. Bazed shares 60% of their revenue with their staked token holders. And Sweet, who dropped their token before releasing their platform, however, they recently launched their casino in August, shares 50% with their staked token holders. Now, the key difference between these two platforms, other than that 10%, is very similar to the differences between Rollbit and BetSwirl, where Bazed uses a provider for their games, so they have way more games than Swirl, who is an in-house game casino. But the downside for all these casinos is that they've already Already launched their tokens. So let's take a look at the future opportunities that are available to us, the casinos that have not launched a token or an NFT yet. So casinos that are planning to do an airdrop, a presale, an NFT launch, whatever it is. First up, we have EBIT. EBIT is currently focused on their NFT drop, for which we did manage to get spots for in my community, Gorilla Labs. Now, by holding the NFT, you're not only going to get a token airdrop on the launch of their token, but they also plan on giving monthly airdrop to their holders, amongst other benefits, such as a better mining rate. Now, if you don't already have whitelist for this NFT collection, but you want to increase your airdrop allocation, you could do this by playing games on their website, which is going to allow you to start mining their token. However, do keep in mind that you're going to be gambling money. So even though you might get tokens in their airdrop, you could lose all your money by gambling. So please proceed with caution. Now, I do like the EBIT casino. I think it's one of the better opportunities out there as this is a licensed casino that is popular. They also seem to be handling their token in a similar way to Rollbit. So I do expect them to also be doing the buybacks and burns. And they only require level one KYC, which means you just have to give them a name and an address, but you don't have to provide an ID or a passport. However, do keep in mind that the withdrawals on this platform are currently manual. So it's gonna take you up to 24 hours to get your money off of their platform. Next up, we have Shuffle, who their casino has a ton of games as well as sports betting. It's also similar to EBIT where they only require level one KYC. However, if you want to take out more than $10,000 in one day, you're going to need to do full KYC. Now, according to this tweet, they are planning on having a token. However, we don't know any of the details. And considering that this casino is relatively new, I also don't have any data on the usage or their traffic. Next up, we have BetBig who have also confirmed a token. The difference between Shuffle and BetBig is we have way more details on how how bet big is going to be doing this now they will be doing revenue sharing with 100 of their revenue going towards the token holders but of course a portion of the tokens is going to be held in the treasury a portion is going to be held by the team so it's not like they're not getting any piece of that profit and they're also going to have benefits like a boost in rewards as well as exclusive lotteries and more now you can see here they do plan on giving 15 percent to community activations so i assume this is going to be an airdrop based on how much you gamble and they're also going to be putting 10 percent towards a public sale but we don't have any details on that just yet next up we have yolo Rect, which this platform is very basic they only have two types of games the first of which is just like an alternative to crypto leverage trading at 1000 X. And they also have a high low game where you just guess if the card is gonna reveal as a high card or a low card. They've also done a pre-sale for their YOLO token very recently. They managed to raise 45 ETH, which I'm not sure if that was a hard cap. If it wasn't and it was just open and they only raised 45 ETH, that is really not bullish for this casino as some of the weirdest meme coins that have no product and no utility have managed to raise more than 45 ETH. The main reason I know about this one is that Wizard of Soho has mentioned it multiple times on his Twitter, and he also said he partnered with them for Illiquid Capital. So Wizard does have a lot of power. When he posts about a token, it typically pumps, or at least a temporary pump and dump. But I'm gonna be keeping an eye on it. It's supposed to drop in mid-October. Next up, we have MetaWin, which has become quite popular recently. While they offer slots and live games, I feel they're more known for their raffles, both crypto raffles, but mainly their NFT 
raffles because I know a lot of people who track their wallet to see what NFTs they're gonna buy because they typically buy a large percentage of that collection and it could end up pumping the floor of that collection. For example, if we take a look at Punks 2023, you could see that they're currently the biggest holder. So whenever they're sweeping a floor or they're buying rares, I know some people who pick some up expecting the floor price to go up. Now there's no details about their token. However, they did tweet about it. So I'm just gonna assume that they're going to be doing an airdrop for their users. Finally, the biggest casino out there is Stake. Unfortunately, they have confirmed that they have no plans of doing a token in the near future. However, it's worth knowing about this one. It's worth keeping an eye on because if they ever did do a token, this thing would absolutely fly. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it educational. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, would you kindly hit that subscribe button, smash that bell notification. Thank you for watching the Crypto Gorilla. Peace.